one on the second assignment, you have this table and you wish to determine if there is a positive linear correlation between the age of a driver and the number of driver deaths. The following table represents the age of a driver and the number of driver deaths per 100,000. Use a significance level of 0 0.05 and round all values to four decimal places. So we know our rounding rule. We have to round to four decimal places. Um, use a significance level of 0 0.05. So my alpha, let's do, write that down, 0 0.05. And you know each of these values represents 100,000 per 100,000. So um, this is not completely in order, for, you know, in terms of least to greatest, but that's okay. The calculator can do that for us. So I didn't input these values into my calculator yet. So wonderful timing, right? We could do that together. <laughs> so stat and edit, right? To input values into our calculator. So I have stuff in L1 and L2. So I'm going to clear that out. I'm going to scroll up and then clear enter and then scroll up, clear enter. If you guys have the app, then you press delete. Don't press delete on this, on the, um, the actual physical calculator. So what I want to do is I want to remember where I'm going to put L1. I'll put driver driver's age in L1 and number of driver deaths in L2. And I want to think about the fact that, and, and I from, from what it sounds like you guys have some experience with linear correlation and you know scatter plots, you know X coordinate and Y coordinate, we're talking about paired data. And we want to know if there's a positive linear correlation, meaning, you know, is it increasing in a positive way and is the relationship linear? So does it kind of bring, come together in, in a linear pattern, which is a line, right? Um, so there's talk about an independent and a dependent value or independent and dependent variable, which is important to think about when you input these into your calculator. I like to put my independent variable into my L1 and my dependent variable into L2. So you want to think about that also prior to doing stuff. So for me, what it seems, what seems to make sense is that a driver's age would be the independent variable and the number of driver deaths per 100,000 would be the dependent. So, so we're, tr we're trying to determine if there's a correlation between these two, and it seems like the number of driver deaths would depend on the driver age. That's what we're looking at, which means that my L1 is going to be my X values, and my L2 is going to be my Y values. And I always like to label that first because you, you know you want to. It's very important to think about that too when you also talk about the regression equation and approximation of other values and that that stuff is possible for these situations. But if there's not a linear correlation, then that stuff doesn't mean anything. So in my L1, I'm putting driver age. So let's put that 59.30. And if you guys want to, oopsies, do it with me. What is this? Okay, 80, 71. Make sure your values are correct. You're putting them incorrectly. Sometimes I go too fast and I miss something. I've done that. Make sure that these are in proper. 80, 49. So it looks like I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 rows. So I should have 10 here. So I'm on the 11th. That looks good. And then the next. 25. See, look at that. That's a 2 and not a 25 like it's supposed to be. 31. 26. And if you guys are looking at the recording, you could do this along. Or if you already input them, you could fast forward. Whatever the heck you want to do. I didn't do this previous, so I'm doing it now. 23 and 26, right? So that looks like I got everything in proper. So Make sure you guys um, have those in. Let me check the chat real quick. Make sure you guys are up to date with me. Got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh huh. It happens. You like, especially when you start doing this stuff quickly. You know, you get you get faster with it, and you miss little. Th I've done it. Believe me. Believe me. I've done it. Um, especially too, if you're using the app. Sometimes um, I just I was using the app checking some of my students um, discussion for last week and I, I got some values that were off and I think because I was rushing to put it into my phone app because I was using my phone app and I missed you know like numbers 
So, you know, you want to double check, especially for your semester project, you know, that you're turning in, make sure things are, are good with your numbers. Um, if you're using Desmos versus, you know, the app and such. So I'm assuming that we have that in. Now I want to show you something, okay? Second quit. I'm going to show you, I want to look at what the scatter plot looks like without, you know, doing it by hand, which this calculator can do for me. And I've shown you some graphs on this calculator. Now th this is not a requirement of this question, but it allows me to visualize what's happening. And that is something that I love to do. Um, so I'm going to graph it on this calculator to see if it looks like there's a linear correlation and if it looks like it's increasing, meaning positive. And if I do have a positive linear correlation, then as X increases, Y increases, which means as the driver's age increases, the number of driver deaths would increase, which is not a wonderful example, but, you know, is the situation we're dealing with right now. So I have my values and I want to see what it looks like. And remember I said stat plot is where all your statistical graphs are located. So if you want to see what it looks like, we're going to go in there. So second and Y equals. Now again, this is not required, but I want to see what it looks like. Plot one is on. That's where I'm going to go. It doesn't matter if it's off because you guys could turn it on if it's off. So if yours is highlighted on off, then highlight it on. And then you see all these different graphs. I think I may have shown you guys like the modified box plot, the box plot, you have a histogram here. The first one is your scatter plot, which for me is already highlighted. If it's not for you, then just, you know, scroll over it and press enter and you can highlight it and see it. This is important because the X list, where'd you put the X list and where'd you put the Y list? My X list, my independent variable list is in L1 and my dependent variable list is in L2. The mark is just a matter of like, do you want it as a dot? Do you want it as a box? What do you want it to look like in terms of your points? Doesn't matter. Um, doesn't matter the color you could do, whatever color you want. This is just telling it, this is the input that I need that you, you know, to graph for me. So this is me just telling my calculator what kind of graph I want, the fact that I want it on, and these are the, these are the locations of the values. All right, now, if I go straight to graph, which is natural because this is graph, this is where the graph would be, it's not showing up. And the reason is because, and I showed you guys this before, this part is not necessarily required. I'm just showing you what the graph looks like. Um, when I go to my window, my X min and my X max, max should match this. The minimum value here is what, 24, and the maximum value here is 80 so we're just i'm gonna make my x min 20 and my x max like 90. i'd like to go a little beyond what is here and then my y's what is the smallest y 20 something the biggest y is 30 something so i'm just gonna do 20 to 40. and this is gonna change you know where i'm looking in terms of my basically quadrant one my x values and my y values so now my graph should ooh, pop up and this looking at it does not look like a linear correlation it looks more like there's not much correlation i don't see a specific type of pattern forming and it's definitely not positive because it's not increasing from left to right so as i go through finding these values and basically running this test and then determining the correlation coefficient i am expecting the correlations coefficient to be close to zero because the closer to zero it is, the less correlation, linear correlation I have. I'm expecting me to basically, um, so the null hypothesis, know what it means, right? The null hypothesis is saying that the linear correlation coefficient for the population is equal to zero, which if the correlation coefficient is equal to zero, then there is no linear correlation. So my, my null hypothesis is basically always going to say that there's no linear correlation, okay? Um, your alternative hypothesis, this is your correlation coefficient for the population, being greater than zero is saying a positive linear correlation. So if I'm, if I, if I'm saying that there is a positive linear correlation, then I would expect to reject the null hypothesis. So my expectation based on looking at the graph is that I'm not going to be able to reject the null hypothesis because this does not look like a positive linear correlation. It doesn't even look linear to me. This is me just looking at the graph just to determine, you know, if my expectations 
or, or what I'm expecting from from the test and from all of that. This is not necessarily required, but I'm a visual person, so I like to look at the graph first, especially when I'm doing linear correlation. So, so it makes a little more sense to me. But it also would make sense that there would not be a positive linear correlation for driver's age and number of deaths. You know, yeah, you know, I'm sure we can say like, well, the driver's age could affect the number of deaths as bad as that said. But you can't necessarily say as the age increases, the number of deaths increases. And you can't necessarily say that it's a linear kind of pattern. You know, and just because we are saying that there's no linear correlation does not mean that there is no correlation at all. Because you can have other correlation. If I have a scatter plot that looks like this, it's still correlation because there's a somewhat of a pattern, but this one is nonlinear. But we're not dealing with that in this course. We're only dealing with linear. So know that if you're saying that there's no linear correlation, that doesn't mean that there's no correlation at all. It just means that it's not linear. This doesn't really look like any type of relationship anyway, which kind of for me makes sense for the situation that I have. This is me just visualizing it and understanding my situation. I haven't run a test or anything yet. OK, now again, it's not required for you to look at the scatter plot, but I like to do that just to see what it looks like. Now, here's the part that you do need because you're going to run the test and you're not doing critical values. And this one is asking for the correlation coefficient, the P value, and then your conclusion based on the P value. So when you guys are doing linear correlation, you're basically using the P value method every time. So it simplifies your situation, right? Because before we had you know, like the critical value method or the traditional method, p-value method. No, this is just the p-value method to basically run your test. So we want to know, this is asking me for the linear correlation coefficient for the sample. And I may have to talk about the difference between these um, variables possibly, huh? Um, I have to give them... And then um, I'll probably go beyond what this says and actually find, well, no. I was going to say I might find the regression equation too, but it wouldn't make sense for this because the equation doesn't make sense for the situation because I'm expecting there to be no linear correlation. But it's asking me for the linear correlation coefficient for the sample. It's asking me for the p-value and then our conclusion and our inter uh, interpretation. So I input my values. This is the part that you need to know how to do. And whenever you're trying to find a p-value or a linear correlation coefficient, you can go again, stat, and scroll over to tests. Okay, so we're hit, we're still in this area. You're still running your hypothesis test. You're not, you know, getting out of that right now. Um, but scroll past all this stuff here. You're going to go down to linreg t test. Linreg linear regression. That's what you're doing. And it's a t-test for linear regression. So F on mine. I don't know what it is on yours. Probably the same, right? This is where I'm at. Now, you see that when I click on enter, it asks me for my X list and my Y list because it's a linear regression kind of situation. What is your independent? What is your dependent? And it already has it in there for me. It probably does for you. My L1 is my X and my L2 is my Y. And that's why I always label this stuff too, because I always want to see, especially when I'm interpreting, you know, what is what? What's my independent? What's my dependent? Leave your frequency one. Now, the Linreg t-test does more than is required of you. You don't have to worry about beta. This is a Greek letter called beta. And there's a lot of other stuff that we do in statistics and hypothesis testing that it is not required of you. We don't talk about in this class. So you don't have to worry about this part. Your focus is here. And this is called rho. It's a Greek letter that basically is what's on your null and alternative hypothesis. And that represents the population um, linear correlation coefficient. So same thing as before. You have a sample variable and a population variable. I'll probably make a table for you with that too. But we're basically doing a right tailed test. That's what's given to me here. So I'm going to scroll over to be right tailed. Um, there's no value to input because we're always comparing it to zero because zero is basically no correlation. Leave this guy empty, empty, clear, and then down to calculate. Now there's more here than is required of you as well. Okay. Um, 
I don't think you're ever asked for a test statistic, but the, te the test statistic is here. Um, yeah, I guess I'll take this. I was like, do I want to? I'll take this and put it here. So this is my output. Some of this you will need dependent on the situation and some of it you won't. Like in this one, we're not going to need some of this. Um, notice that there's an arrow over here that implies that there's more information below. So if I scroll down, you'll see, and let me grab BS, let me grab the rest of it. And the rest of it is linear correlation coefficient and R squared. So it does everything for you. Technically, it has the regression equation here as well if you need it. But that would only make sense if there is linear correlation. So I'm going to show you. So this is my output. The first one is the alternative. You don't care about this. This is what you're dealing with. This is your HA. The second thing is the test statistic. I don't think that you guys are asked for that at all, but that's there if you need it. This is the p-value, which you are asked for. And in this particular case, oh, and this is a very, oh uh, no, this particular case, 0 0.9718. Remember, I'm rounding to four decimal places. That's a huge p-value, which is what I expect. Um, just for future, actually, Here's my R, my linear correlation coefficient, which is negative 0 0.619, rounding to four decimal places because this is 61899, so I would have to round. It would take me to 0.619, rounding to four decimal places. I'm not asked for R squared, but that's not hard. I can always square R if I need to get R squared. Um, if I were to need the, core, uh, the regression equation, it gives me that as well. This is why I like LinReg t-test. It gives me everything in one shot that I need for this particular course, okay? Um, it gives you A, which is your y-intercept, and B, which is your slope, okay? I don't really need this for this problem because I'm not asked for it, but also, check this out. P-value is way bigger than alpha. Alpha is 0 0.05. P-value is way bigger than alpha. And if you remember last week and the week before, when the p-value is bigger than alpha, then I fail to reject the null. Right? I cannot reject the null. This is huge, which is what I expected. Because remember, look at my graph. My graph does not look linear. It does not look positive linear at all. But it doesn't look linear at all either. So um, I'm failing to reject the null, which means let me see how they're wording it for you. There is insufficient evidence to make and let me copy and paste this actually, just so you have it from your direct. Um, put it in here so you have it from your direct. So I am not supporting the alternative, right? Let me grab this. The conclusion is. What is my conclusion? Which one would it be? Um, remember, I'm failing to reject the null, so I can't reject the null, which means I'm expecting no, no linear correlation. So let's see. There's insufficient evidence to make a conclusion about the linear correlation between driver age and number of driver deaths. That looks good, but let's read the rest of it just to make sure. Um, there is a significant linear correlation between. There is definitely not right a significant linear correlation so that's out process of elimination right there is a significant positive linear correlation no wait there's not even any linear correlation there is a significant negative nope not negative either because this is a huge p-value so boom there is insufficient evidence to support the conclusion about the linear correlation between driver age and number of drivers deaths so again i'm failing to reject the null so I'm not going along with this. And if I'm failing to reject the null, then I'm going with that there's no linear correlation. OK, and so which means that this this whole equation wouldn't even make sense because these regression equations are used sometimes to approximate situations that are not here. Like, for example, if I had a driver's age and the driver was like, I don't know what's not here, 50, what would I expect the number of driver deaths per 100,000 to be? I mean, I could approximate that with this equation, but it wouldn't make sense because that equation represents, where's my calculator, represents this situation, which, you know, how the heck am I approximating? This is, no, 
if I draw a line to approximate this, which typically your regression equation line is like in between, there's no pattern. There's not enough strength in the pattern to basically go along with that. That equation means nothing. So um, let me stop recording. I was like, let me stop recording and then clear. What's up, Kelly? OK, so I followed you. I had a different test. I had to do a less than test. OK, because uh, my question was different. All but, right. And I got it. But uh, just tell me, let's say the p-value is less than mm -hmm. the 0 0.05. Then we just reject the whole the null. Right, blah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Then you would reject the null and you would support this. So if my in my example, if I were rejecting the null, which means the p value is less than the alpha, then yeah. I would put the one that matches the alternative, which is saying that it's a positive linear correlation. Mine okay. would be positive, yours would be negative because yours is a left tail test. Right. Okay. So I mean, this is a huge p value, but that's why yeah, I, I had a similar p value. That's why I was able to follow you. I just had a different test because mine said um, negative. Mm -hmm. Instead, of, right in the beginning when you read it, it said negative. So I already knew. Okay, it was less than. Yeah. Okay. But you got the values and it's good. It's match. Well, I mean, if it's different values, obviously it's gonna, not going to match my numbers, but it's looking good for you. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, wait. Any other questions right now? Now, Jennifer, if you want me to go over how to graph it again, I will. I'll probably do it every every um, every question just because I like to see it um, and you can follow along. But if you want me to really walk through, um, I can do that, too. I'll do it again anyway for the next problem. So any other questions about this one? I mean, are we OK? Do you guys, you know, I completely jumped the gun because we started talking and you guys are already talking about correlation, but do we know what the heck the linear correlation coefficient is and such? I mean, that's the big, and the regression equation, you know, these are the big uh, heroes of this week. So remember, I did this. Um, oh, wait. Hold on one second, okay? Okay, um, sorry about that. Remember I, I drew this I don't know, a few times, this table. I did it for mean, standard deviation, proportion, and now I'm going to add the linear correlation coefficient, okay? Linear core coef, right? I'm just going <laughs> to... And I have variables for each one of these for sample and for population, and you do for this week as well. So X bar was your mean for the sample, and U was your population mean, S was your sample standard deviation and sigma was your population standard deviation. This should sound familiar. P hat or P with the tick was what they used for sample proportion. P by itself, the lowercase P was population proportion. And now for linear correlation coefficient, R is your sample linear correlation coefficient, lowercase R. And then rho, which I can't always, it's kind of like that, <laughs> rho, this is called rho. It's another Greek letter that we use representing the population linear correlation coefficient. That's this guy, which is not exactly a lowercase p. OK. Um, I know that it looks like it here. It's not it's not a lowercase p. You can see it's almost like I like a little fancy, it's a little fancier than that. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's not really P, it's it's called rho. So um, this is the best way that I could draw it, right? 
I do it because I don't want it to look like a P. It's not a, it's not a, it's kind of like fancy-ish, okay? I guess that's better. So I, I didn't do this either, but your R or row um, is between, here, I'll put it on a number line, from negative one to one, right? And obviously the center is zero. So this is for R, your correlation coefficient, or even, you know, rho. Um, it's limited between negative one and one. I'm not less than negative one. I'm not greater than positive one. I'm never going to have a representation of, of uh, maybe I should record this too. Should I record this? Kelly, do you have another question or, or is your hand still raised just by accident? Sorry, no, I'll, I'll lower it. Okay, I just want to make sure. I'll record this too, just in case. I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't going to record this. Oh, I